How do you pray? His own Dalama says that when you pray, now of course, in Christianity, in for example, in others, there's a very much a direct link with God, isn't it? God. You pray to God or to the Christ or if you're Catholic to Virgin Mary. Pray. Now Buddhism, because there is no notion of God. I, I think interesting about Buddhism. Buddhism denies the concept of God, but not nature of God. Because ultimately, God is ultimate. God cannot be spoken of in terms of even, you know. It's beyond words, beyond thoughts, beyond description. Yeah? And so, in some ways, it's interesting when there were really serious dialogue that were happening between uh, some of the uh, Trappist monks, as well as the Benedictine, and with Tibetan uh, Buddhist meditation masters when we're discussing. And that when you talk to really contemplative monks, they speak of God as not being outside, within. And in that respect, Buddhism very much in agreement. But Buddhism is kind of quite, in some ways, is quite you know, because when you talk about absolute, as one great Buddhist saint called, absolute beyond mind, that which within realm and correlative. So it's beyond, so therefore we cannot, you know, speak in terms of concepts. So, so Buddhism does not speak in God in terms of a creator, so on. You understand? But then, who do we pray? And Buddhism, there are, for example, in the fundamental principles that we all have Buddha nature, potential enlightenment. Even Buddha was a human being, just one of us, like us. And through his many lives of purification, attained enlightenment in the 6th century BC as Gautama Siddhartha and showed us how to part to enlightenment. So there are many beings who have attained enlightenment. What? For, this, for the benefit of others. In order to bring about the enlightenment, seeing that all these beings suffer, but really how we can we bring an end to the suffering and through eliminating ignorance, negative emotion, negative action, most importantly to return to the true to to glory of the true nature. In fact, when Buddhism we talk about enlightenment, enlightenment refers to the ultimate lasting happiness because whatever happiness we have in this world is only temporary and often without no trouble. A lot of time we suffer because of happiness, for the sake of happiness. So the ultimate lasting happiness is enlightenment. That's why the great, all the practitioners, true practitioners, dedicate their life to the pursuit of enlightenment, which is dedicated for the enlightenment of all beings. So therefore, these great beings like the Buddha and many bodhisattvas, when they become enlightened, or they're enlightened, by the way, has got many, many levels also. And the best you think of enlightenment is one thing. And quite a lot of people are enlightened already. <laughs> it's to be enlightened is not so easy. There are many stages. And so, but all these beings, they have dedicated their, uh, like for example, there's one Buddha called Vajrasattva. He, when he strives, when we first dedicate his mind to enlightenment, he prayed that when I become enlightenment, may the power of my enlightenment be Whoever thinks of me, whoever meditates on me, whoever says my essence, the mantra, may he or she be purified or healed. So he is the Buddha, become in that, he is the source of all healing. You understand? Invoke that. So there are many enlightened beings who are there available to help us on the path to enlightenment. So to that we invoke. But in Buddhism, we say, you invoke, you pray until you become enlightened. Once you become enlightened, then you will become also the, uh, you will become the one that actually gives refuge to others. Is that clear? So when you pray, very important is to open your heart, your mind, really. I mean, for example, sometimes when we pray, you know, we don't know. Like, for example, Buddha himself said, whoever thinks of me, I'm in front of them. I shall bless and empower. So remembering that, because Buddhas have the wisdom that knows, compassion that cares, and power to benefit and liberate beings. 
So therefore, that when you pray them, pray them, even if you don't see with your mind eyes, even if you don't see them, in fact, many great practitioners, when they practice more and more, purify, they can actually have vision of Buddhas. Like the Dalai Lama probably talks to Buddhas quite frequently. Tengu Kensu Mbuchis used to talk regularly there are. There are, but they never say that. They keep it completely, you know. And so you become, when you purify perception, you can, you can see the Buddhas more. But when you don't purify, they're there, even though we don't see, but sometimes when you practice, we can feel the presence. At least with me, I cannot see them, but I can feel their presence, which is an evidence of their presence. And you invoke them for the benefit of others. You understand? So in order to, basically that. 